All right. W welcome back, everyone. Ready for another deep dive? Always. What are we digging into today? Well, today's deep dive takes us straight to the heart of Hungarian football, but with a fascinating English twist, of course. Oh, do you tell. We're talking Sooks Cornell. This one comes straight from our listeners. Seems you guys are really locked into this story. Can't say I'm surprised. It's a good one. That's an understatement. We're working with this Hungarian language video analysis of Sikus' performance with Plymouth Argyle in the championship. Right off the bat, the video throws out this bold claim. Plymouth Argyle's financial power is in the same order of magnitude as Ferenc Varos. Wow, okay, that's a statement. Right. So I need you to break this down for our listeners. Why is that comparison such a big deal? Okay, so Ferenc Varos, or Freddy, as it's often called, they're basically royalty in Hungarian football. Mm. Historically dominant, huge fan base. Yeah. They're the pinnacle for a lot of Hungarian players. Makes sense. So to say Plymouth Argyle are operating on a similar financial level, that's huge. Yeah. It implies a club with more resources, more ambition than many might realize. Exactly. It's like saying they're playing in the same league, at least financially, which makes this whole thing even more interesting. But hold on, because it gets better. The video then says that before heading to England, Sukes was playing for Dioscar and couldn't even get a starting spot. Really? That's what I thought. So what's the deal with that? Fill us in. Well, the Oscar, they're a decent mid-table team in the Hungarian league, you know? Mm -hmm. Not exactly known for uh, producing world-class talent. That's so you've got this player who's considered not good enough to start for a mid-table Hungarian side. And now suddenly, he's a key player for a club with supposed Friedi-level money competing in one of the toughest leagues in the world. It's quite the turnaround. It really is. It's like they unearthed a hidden gem or something. So the question is, is Shuk as a late bloomer? Was he massively underrated back in Hungary? It's definitely possible. This is where our deep dive gets really exciting, I think. Set the stage for us. What's the inside scoop on Plymouth Argyle? Where are they sitting in the championship table? All right, so right now, Plymouth Argyle find themselves in 15th place in the championship, which, as any football fan knows, is a notoriously competitive league. No kidding. They've had, you know, mixed results, some impressive wins, but also some setbacks. It's early in the season, though, so there's definitely room to climb that table. And yeah, six sure. is right in the thick of it all, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Starting center back. It's a crucial position, especially in a league as physically demanding as the championship. And it's not just about making up the numbers. This video highlights that he's ranked as the 13th most valuable player on the team, according to Transfermarkt. Transfermarkt, reliable source. Right. And when you consider the financial power, the depth of some championship sides, that's saying something. Especially for a guy who just last season couldn't even get on the pitch for a mid-table Hungarian team. Okay, you've got my attention. This isn't just a player. This is a mystery unfolding before our very ears. So let's talk about his game. What's so special about Six Cornell? What's got everyone buzzing? Well, what's really captivating is that the video paints him as this, like, quintessential modern defender. Okay, I like the sound of that. Let's unpack it. Starting with, uh... How about his recent performance in Plymouth's 3-1 win over Luton Town? Good place to start. A win's a win in the championship, right. But I have a feeling not all wins are created equal. So give us some context. You're absolutely right. A win in this league, it's something to savor, that's for sure. It's so unpredictable, any team can upset the odds on any given day. All right. Luton Town, there are no pushovers. Solid team, well-organized. So for Plymouth to beat them 3-1, that suggests a really dominant team performance. And the fact that Sukes played the full 90 minutes, that shows how important he is to their defensive structure. Okay, so we're not dealing with some fluke here. This is a player who's integral to a team that's consistently grinding out results in one of the toughest leagues around. And remember, the video claims he's playing even better than that 13th most valuable ranking would suggest. So break it down for us. What's he actually doing on the pitch? What's got everyone so excited about Sukes Cornell? Now we're getting to the good stuff. This is where the video really digs into the details of his game, and it paints a fascinating picture. We're talking about a defender who's not just physically gifted, but intelligent and adaptable too. All right, I'm all ears. Hit me with the highlights. Well, they use terms like excellent at holding the line and very aware of his positioning, which is obviously music to any coach's ears, but especially for a center back in Plymouth system. Okay, so for those of us who haven't analyzed tactical formation since breakfast, break it down for us. What does holding the line even mean in the middle of a game? 
So imagine the defensive line is like this wall, right? It's constantly shifting, reacting to how the other team is moving. And if one brick is out of place, the whole structure is weak. Holding the line is all about staying perfectly in sync with the other defenders, with your depth, making sure you're moving together. It takes discipline, anticipation, communication. So it's more than just being big and strong and booting the ball away. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. Well, yeah, being physical definitely helps. But a defender who really gets tactics, that's invaluable, and it sounds like Schick says both. The video even praises his tackling as selfless, meaning he's not just going for the big flashy plays, but thinking about the whole team. Okay, I like that. And then there's this intriguing comment about his passing, right? They say, gives beautiful flat passes, and get this, even long passes of 20, 30 meters. I don't know, that doesn't strike me as your typical center back move. Exactly. This is where you see the modern center back really shining through. It's not enough to just stop the other team's attacks anymore. You've got to be able to start your own and do it precisely with purpose. Those long, accurate passes that he can supposedly pull off, those can completely change a game. I'm picturing sucks here. Launching the ball to a winger, tearing down the line, or finding that striker with the vision to hold up the play. Am I on the right track? Absolutely, you've got it. Those long passes from the back can be killer. You know, you bypass all that midfield pressure, create a scoring chance in the blink of an eye, take the pressure off your own team all at once. It's high risk, high reward. But if Sux is pulling it off, no wonder people are taking notice. Speaking of taking notice, there's one group in particular that this video seems pretty keen to impress. The Hungarian national team. It's almost like they're sending out a signal flare. Well, it is the question everyone's asking, isn't it? Mm. Could this be his ticket to the big leagues? Internationally speaking, it's exciting to think about, but it's a complicated situation. All right, well, enlighten us. What's the deal with the Hungarian national team's defense right now? Is there a schicks shaped opening waiting to be filled? So it's a time of change for the Hungarian team right now. New coach, new philosophy, new vision. And the defense has been a big talking point, you know? You've got some established players who maybe aren't at their peak anymore, but then this new generation's coming up. And where does Sucks fit into all of this? That's the million dollar question. If you just look at his form right now, you could definitely make a case for him. He's a consistent starter in a really tough league. He's composed, he's smart under pressure. But international football, that's another level entirely. Mm -hmm. The pace is faster, the pressure is higher, and you're often facing the best attackers in the world. It's a trial by fire, even for experienced pros. And let's not forget, it wasn't that long ago that this was a guy who couldn't even get a starting spot for Dioscar. To go from that to potentially knocking on the door of the national team, that's a crazy turnaround. It really is. I mean, this video even mentions him alongside names like Willy Orban, Attila Salai, Loic Nego, established Hungarian defenders. Are we ready to put Sachs in that category yet? I think we have to be realistic. It's just one video, yeah. you know, and it's focused on the positives, which is great. It's exciting, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Orban, Shale, Nago, these guys have played at the highest levels for their clubs in their country. They've had hundreds of appearances against world-class opposition. Sucks is just starting out. True, true. But what a start it's been, from overlooked in Hungary to the cusp of international recognition. It's the kind of story you can't help but root for. So what does Sooks need to do to really solidify his case for a call-up? What are the selectors looking for? Consistency. That's key. One great season in the championship is amazing, don't get me wrong, but to really get the attention of the national team, he needs to prove this is the new him. Keep improving week after week. Maintain those high standards. That's how you go from potential to, okay, this guy's the real deal. The video definitely seems optimistic, and I gotta say, I'm starting to feel it too. It's that classic underdog story. And that's the beauty of football, right? Yeah. The possibility for the unexpected, the hidden talents, those against all odds stories. Shooks Cornell's story has it all. It really does, and it's funny how quickly things can change in football, isn't it? One minute you're fighting for minutes, the next you're being talked about as a potential national team player. It says a lot about his character, though. Yeah. You know, his dedication. He clearly loves a challenge, and when he gets an opportunity, he grabs it with both hands. And this is where I think our deep dive gets really interesting. Because it's not just about whether or not he gets that national team call-up, right? It's about his whole career, where this success can take him. Exactly. Every match he plays is like a job interview, you know? The championship is full of talent, and the scouts from the bigger leagues are always watching. If he keeps playing like this, who knows what the future holds? So let's say, purely hypothetically, of course, that Seuss keeps playing at this level, maybe even takes it up a notch. 
What's his ceiling? Are we talking Premier League, a regular spot on the Hungarian national team? I mean, it's definitely possible. The Premier League is the dream for a lot of championship players. And a big season can put you on the map. As for the Hungarian national team, it's tough to say there are a lot of factors. His form, of course, but also who else is playing his position, what the coach is looking for, it's always changing. Which is what makes it so interesting. It's not just about watching a player develop. It's like we're seeing this whole story unfold and we have no idea what's going to happen next. That's the beauty of football, right? Yeah. That's why we do these deep dives, the uncertainty, the possibility. Well said. Sats Cornell from being overlooked in Hungary to maybe becoming a star. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to see what happens next. Me too. Who knows, maybe years from now, we'll look back at this deep dive and say, that's when we first saw something special. Now that's a thought. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of Hungarian football. Until next time, everyone.